Thousands of years ago, people had no telescopes or rocket ships. Although people back then did not have the tools and knowledge that we have today, they were just as curious about the stars and other celestial bodies or objects found in space. The ancient Greeks, Arabs, Romans, Chinese, Egyptians, Turks, Mayans, Babylonians, and countless others who lived long, long ago all studied the stars and tried to figure out what they were and why they were there. Although they did not know what the stars were made of or how far away they really were, the ancient people named the stars and mapped them out. We still use those names today. They figured out which stars appeared in the sky during certain times of year. And even though thousands of years have passed on Earth, the stars have basically remained the same. In other words, when you look up at the stars at night, you are seeing very nearly the same stars the ancient Greeks, Arabs, and countless others saw as well. Outer space has changed very little in all those years. The ancient Greeks believed that the stars had been placed in the sky by gods in order to tell stories and teach lessons. The Greeks identified certain groups of stars in the night sky that seemed to form specific shapes. These shapes are called constellations. That's the name for the pictures they saw in the stars. In the United States, Europe, and many other parts of the world, we still call the stars by the names that the ancient Greeks or Arabs used so long ago. One of the first groups of stars that young stargazers in the United States learn about is also the easiest one to spot. The Big Dipper looks like a giant soup ladle in the sky. You might also think it looks like a pot with a handle. The Big Dipper is made up of seven stars. The Big Dipper looks different in the sky depending upon the time of year. Sometimes the Big Dipper looks right side up, sometimes it looks upside down, and sometimes it appears to be standing on its handle. That's not because the Big Dipper moves, but because the Earth is rotating on its axis and orbiting around the Sun. The Big Dipper has a friend called the Little Dipper. The Little Dipper also contains seven stars. The bright star at the end of the handle is special. It is called Polaris, or the North Star. Unlike other celestial bodies, the North Star basically stays in the same place in the sky as we observe it from Earth, always in the North. Since ancient times, people have relied on this star to find their way in the world. Knowing which way is north is the first step to figuring out in which direction you are heading. Christopher Columbus and other sailors used to look for the North Star on starry nights out on the wide ocean. Because Polaris is always in the north sky, the explorers could use it like a compass to navigate their ships north, south, east, or west. This picture shows one of the most famous constellations of all, Orion. Ancient Greeks told stories or myths about Orion, a famous hunter, Myths are stories from ancient times that explain events or things in nature. The constellation Orion is known all over the world. The constellation itself contains eight main stars. Orion's belt, made up of the three stars in a row across his body, is the easiest to spot. As you can see, it takes a little imagination to look at these stars and see a hunter. The single star in the upper left is imagined to be the beginning of a raised arm, which is holding a club or a sword. With his other arm, imagined to extend from another single star, he holds a shield. According to one myth, Orion bragged he was such a good hunter that he could kill all the animals on Earth. The gods decided to punish him by creating Scorpio, a giant scorpion that Orion could not defeat. A scorpion is a poisonous spider-like insect with a curved tail. Not far from the Orion constellation is Taurus, which shows the head and horns of a mighty bull. It is often said that the hunter Orion is fighting the bull Taurus. 
So, according to the myths, Orion has a tough time up there. He's being chased by a giant scorpion at the same time he's fighting a giant bull. Fortunately, Orion has a couple of friends. His two loyal hunting dogs, Canis Major and Canis Minor. These are Latin words. Canis means dog, major means big, and minor means small. So Canis Major means big dog, and Canis Minor means small dog. These dogs follow Orion through the sky, helping him fight Taurus the Bull. There are 88 major constellations, and most people around the world use the same basic list. When these constellations were first named, most ancient people could only guess what stars actually were. Ancient people told stories and myths based on what they could see with their own eyes when they looked up at the sky. But we have learned that there is much more to space than meets the eye. In fact, sometimes when we look into outer space, our eyes can play tricks on us. The first astronomers began using mathematics and science to provide different kinds of explanations than the myths that ancient people told to describe what they saw in the sky. Rather than make up stories, astronomers developed hypotheses or scientific explanations based on the facts they discovered about outer space. A hypothesis is different from a story because a hypothesis can be tested. For example, ancient people saw that the sun rose on one side of the sky in the morning and set on the other side of the sky in the evening. Seeing the sun's movement across the sky caused ancient people to believe that the sun moved while the earth stood still. Ancient Greeks and Arabs, and in fact most people in the world, believed that everything in the universe, including the sun and all the stars, revolved around the earth. It took thousands of years before anyone believed that the opposite was true, that the earth in fact revolved around the sun. This discovery was made by an early astronomer named Nicholas Copernicus. Copernicus was the first to use science to explain that the earth actually revolves around the sun. Unfortunately, hardly anyone believed him at the time. That was about 500 years ago. Another astronomer named Galileo came after Copernicus, and he believed what Copernicus said about the Earth revolving around the Sun. He invented telescopes that helped astronomers prove that Copernicus's theory was true. Although Galileo did not invent the first telescope, he did invent very powerful telescopes that helped him and other astronomers make many important discoveries about space. For this reason, he is considered by many to be the father of modern astronomy. Since the time of these early astronomers, people have gained an incredible amount of knowledge about the stars and the universe, and now use tools like telescopes to expand that knowledge every day. Copernicus and Galileo would be amazed at the advances or progress people have made in astronomy over the past century. Compare this incredibly large modern telescope to the one Galileo was holding in the last picture. Astronomers today use telescopes like this one to study the stars and other distant planets of outer space that Galileo may never have imagined. Yet even as we have gained new knowledge about outer space, our understanding of the stars is still built upon the stories and knowledge passed on by people for thousands of years. Next time you find a constellation in the sky, you will know that other stargazers have been studying and telling stories about that same group of stars for thousands and thousands of years.